Well, it doesn't say rain today, so it has to be accurate. I mean, it's the weather channel. Though I must say the overcast does not have me very reassured. Huh. What well, is up everybody? Back for another pickup truck update, Silverado. So the brakes suck and I feel like I'm gonna die. So today I'm going to Hey, stop digging. Blonde one, stop digging. They're nuts. I feel like I'm gonna die in that when I uh brake especially suddenly. So we're gonna have to do something about that. So I don't have enough room for activities. So yeah, let's get it moving. Hey, stop digging. I mean it. Uh, it don't remote start. activities so for example dog for example I have this old intake setup that came on that Silverado and I have the old Silverado hood under the truck for space saving reasons and that's still so what we're gonna do is ground do just a half and half so we're gonna just stick the ass in of the Chevy in here do the brake bleed as needed keep the hood out from under the garage then we'll flip it around and we'll bring the front back in here and we'll proceed So for this, now for the brake bleed, we all usually should know master cylinder in your ABS module, you got to start from the farthest away. So in an American truck, it's usually back right, back left, front right, front left. So that's what I'm going to do with this because that's how we do it with a Silverado or a GM truck. Now what I am going to do is just jack the rear up and just get both wheels off so that way it's easier to see what we got going on. I'll probably just go the front right and then front left and up in the front. But either way you gotta have a jack, jack stands, your proper tools, uh, your proper an impact gun is definitely nice to get the nuts off. I'm going to break mine loose with a breaker bar because you never want to throw a lot of force at an aftermarket lug nut. And once I do that I'll get it up in the air we're gonna drill them right off. Check out the brakes and see what we got going on with it. It's a 14 year old truck. I have had it for three months, so I cannot complain about anything failing because I don't know what it's really been through. We're going to find out. Now, also, display these are the Moto Metal 951 wheels. So they have a very unique and ugly, because of age, lug nut. So there is a special socket provided. And also remember, always be safe. Use your jack stands. If you don't have jack stands, get jack stands. Because you don't want all this weight to come down on you. Granted, lifted trucks a lot easier, but any vehicle at all, just properly support it. Your life's worth it. Now 
now we go under the hood and we'll clean out the reservoir. Silverado GMT 800 reservoir is right here. Dot three brake fluid only. So what I'm gonna do is clean all the fluid out of this and then I will, shouldn't there be something attached to that? Well, there's nothing loose hanging. Oh, either way. So I'm gonna blow this loose, get the dust off it, and then I'm gonna suck out all the old brake fluid and replenish with new. So that way we can get on with the bleed. Let's gonna use old toothbrush. <laughs> it works. And some compressed air. So next little trick is gonna be to put it in a bottle that you don't need. And I have this fancy style uh, pump. So the top end of the pump sucks out. The bottom end flushes out. And be mindful to be careful because brake fluid will destroy your paint. Gatorade bottle fits in that rad hose pretty good. That's pretty clean brake fluid. I mean, I pulled blacker fluid out of a vehicle before. Nice and slow because it's just going to splurt all over that uh, Gatorade bottle and make a mess. Holy cow, that reservoir hole held a lot. I might have wanted to get two big bottles in. So I'm not going to take it completely dry. The rest will get flushed out. But wow, about filled out the Gatorade bottle, huh? we to return the cap to keep the reservoir clean. And let us replenish with some of Prestone's finest dot three. Yeah, that's damn near like the color of water. Alright, half full in the res. I'm going to stop because my arm's tired. Alright, the reservoir is up to the full line. So now we are going to go out back and crack the line. I'm just going to set this on top for right now because we will be coming back. You also don't really want to leave good brake fluid exposed to oxygen. We don't want to get it contaminated and it could get less effective. So you can tell I've done this a couple times before. Like I've said, I have pulled out blacker fluid than that before. But as dark as that is, yeah, it's aged enough that it's worth changing. This is pretty dark too. But here's the unique setup for what is called the one-man bleed. If nobody knows about it, what you do is you get a bottle. I prefer to Gatorade bottles. They're strong, rugged, except for the cap. Don't drop it on the cap and you drill a hole. You put a line such as, uh, I think it's 3 16 or 13 16. Well, one of the two. Then you drill a pinhole for air and then you can crack your bleeder and zip tie this end onto the nipple and then go in the driver's seat and just start pumping your brake. About five, to 10 times, give or take, your distance from the ABS module. I'm gonna need a longer hose before I know it. And it'll take off about that much. That way we have a fresh size that's not gauged out. I'm actually gonna dump some of this out into another bottle so I have more of a fresh start. It's almost sad how out of date I am with certain things. Like I have a drop light that's still an electric cord. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is get my brush in there and scrub that off. And what I really gotta hope is that the bleeder doesn't snap off. And what I will first do initially, 10 millimeter first, this silver auto by the way, is crack it loose first with the socket, nice and carefully. It's pretty tight, so that's a bad sign already. Oh yeah, somebody tightened the living shit out of it, stupid idiot. 
There's no need to tighten this that freaking hard. I'm just gonna go back and forth and hopefully get it. Well, I don't have a torch. Maybe I'll put a heat gun on it. Okay, with a heat gun, put right on it at max setting. I was able to crack it loose. I also went and got the 3 8 instead of the quarter drive. You start small, you work up. I'll restore my non-magnetic light. Grab the girlfriend's toothbrush again and clean her out. Totally kidding. And another brake clean blast. And now we go. So I'll grab our contraption. Or if there's a sleek little spot I can get this wedged in and not have a cable all wacky. Yeah, that could work. Oh, forgot another step. I gotta put this around the fitting. And we only wanna have to do maybe a quarter turn, nothing too drastic. And I put the zip tie on it, just snug, to ensure a decent seal. Here comes the fluid. So I will go into the cab, pump the brake pedal a few times, Let's see what kind of stuff we get out of there. So that was seven pumps. Does not appear to have a lot of bubbling. Actually, it looks really good. And the brake pedal is nice and firm. So that's also good. It's still a tenth fifth green, so I'm going to continue to pump it a few more times, check the brake reservoir, and then decide if it's worth doing it anymore. Still looking decent. I'm going to pump it just a couple more times. It's starting to look lighter, and we'll see where that's at. Bubble free, looks pretty clean. So we're gonna clock, we're gonna chuck that shut. Call that a success on that one. And with how thin brake lining is, seven pumps followed by another seven, followed by another four. We should definitely have some fresh fluid in the back of this caliper. All right, so I'm gonna let that hang loose. I'm gonna drop this and then pinch the line actually back this zip tie off just a bit. You want it snug just enough that you can feel it go around the rim of the nipple. Pinch the line by hand and pull it off. You're going to lose just a little bit, but nothing too drastic that it's going to cause a big mess on your floor. I will remove my 10mm, give it a very snug tight, well, loosely snug. I'm not gonna go crazy. There is no need to go He-Man strong on a brake nipple. That right there is just fine. I did it with a couple fingers. All right, that side's done. Got some light on the subject as well. I do have a bit of a lip right there on the rotor, so the rotor is worn down a bit. We do have brake pad on both sides, not as much on the back. So I will probably look into brake pads at minimum. You fortunately can't see through that backing plate, but there's no real bad scoring. Everything looks good. Double check the torque on those uh, wheel spacer nuts. Thankfully they're hub centric and very proper. And we'll move on to the driver's side and continue on with the bleed. All right, on a good note, we got the rear brakes bled out completely. Fresh fluid in all of both calibers. The lines are cleaned out. Now all that's left is up front, so it should be a lot easier. Now on the downside, cleaning out the reservoir and pumping fluid all the way throughout the back lines, I am out of brake fluid. So I might just get another one of the uh, bigger bottles because I might end up doing this in my Trans Am anyway. That needs a lot of brake attention as well. Uh, so we're gonna button it up.
like I said, now I gotta make a run, uh, run to the parts store to get another bottle. But um, I'll get the bigger one so that way I can clean the reservoir out on this. I've been planning to do some brake work on that this year as well. And I also have a plan for that, a little kind of like nice eye candy touch up mod that I'm gonna do. So I gotta get parts for that as well. And I'm really gonna take the chance because I'm gonna run the town with this. So let's see how that works in my favor. Now to get into some nice clothes. So, ran to town, got the brake fluid, got the other parts I needed, and I even got food for tonight. So, turned out to be excellent. We got off lucky, guys. <laughs> so we're gonna get back into the brake bleeding for that. I know they say it's size that counts, but I tell you what, very nice having a little four inch around that truck. I gotta have to buy one for this one. Now I'm also gonna go get back into my play clothes. Alright, that's better. Now I'm ready to get greasy and dirty. the way it should. So I'm gonna guess not too long ago these front rotors or pads were changed. Possibly caliper as well. It doesn't look crappy like the backs. I kind of forgot to put this on the way I normally like to but that one broke loose really easy so I'm sure we can get it with the open end no problem. There we go. I'm actually gonna snug it back up. It came real loose. Looks cleanish, but has a little rust spot. Let's see how it looks. Now, I am seeing a little bit of bubbling in there. We're gonna have to pump it out a little bit more and see if we can get clear fluid in that. I would say that's bled and pretty clean. And also right now is always a good time to take a good look at your tire tread, see if your wear looks pretty good. This one's standing on its own, looks very flat, so I think we're good for now. is all done. Brakes are all bled. All I gotta do now is check the reservoir. Uh, before I do that I'm gonna fire the truck up, pump the brake a few times, make sure we get a good hard pedal again, and we'll close off the reservoir after checking to make sure the fluid is proper. And we'll take it for a little drive and see how it feels. out. The pedal feels harder. It feels a bit better than it did. It's not like my F-150 by any means where it's like right there, but I mean it, it stops. It is stopping better than it was, so the fresh fluid definitely did it a little bit of good. So we're just going to drive it a little bit more, maybe stomp on it a few times, see how we can get her grab a little bit better without changing parts, you know, just maintaining fresh fluid, put new life back into it. I think we did a worthwhile job. 
the pedal does feel much better than it did now. It squeaks, which is annoying, but I never really feel like bleeding brakes without having like really changed anything is a waste of time, especially if it's a vehicle that's new to you because brake fluid does get old and it does need changed after a while. <laughs> we got the ABS module to engage on that one. I'll back the truck back up to my house here and make up the video, post it. So that's that. The next update will be a little something for the F-150 to make it look better in the back. Take a guess at what you believe it is. It's a common little thing that's been being done by some people. And I'll leave it at that until I post it. <laughs> So until then, that's going to need change at some point too, real nice and slow. So until then, everybody, hope you enjoyed my video. If you would like, please give a subscription, and I will keep the videos coming. And have a good day, everybody. We'll see you on the next upload.